Welcome to the Inspirational Living Podcast. Get thought-provoking gifts, t-shirts, iPhone cases, and more by visiting our sister website, bookofzen.com. Today's reading was edited and adapted from The Book of Business by Albert Hubbard, published in 1913. The driving theme of ecclesiastics is moderation. Buddha proclaimed that the greatest word in any language is equanimity. William Morris said that the finest blessing of life was systematic, useful work. St. Paul declared that the greatest thing in life was love. Moderation, equanimity, work and love. You need no other physician. The individual who has achieved success is the one who has lived well, laughed often, and loved much. The secret of success is this. There is no secret of success. Keep your chin up and your head high. We are gods in a chrysalis. Success is a result of mental attitude, and the right mental attitude will bring success in everything you undertake. In fact, there is no such thing as failure, except to those who accept and believe in failure. Failure, there is no such word, in all the bright lexicon of speech, unless you yourself have written it there. A great success is made up of an aggregation of little ones. These finally form a whole. The person who fills a position of honor and trust has first filled many smaller positions of trust. The leader who oversees 10,000 has had the charge of many small squads. And before that leader had charge of a small squad, they had charge of themselves. The one who does their work so well that they need no supervision has already succeeded, and the acknowledgement of their success is sure to follow in the form of a promotion. The world wants its work done, and civilization is simply a search for men and women who can do things. Success is the most natural thing in the world. The worker who does not succeed has placed themselves in opposition to the laws of the universe. The world needs you. It wants what you produce. You can serve it, and if you will, it will reward you richly. By doing your work, you are moving along the line of least resistance. It is a form of self-protection. You need what others have to give. They need you. To reciprocate is wisdom. To rebel is folly. To consume and not produce is a grave mistake. And upon such a person, nature will visit her displeasure. The common idea is that success means great sacrifice and that you must buy it with a price. In one sense, this is true. To succeed, you must choose. If you want this, you cannot have that. Success demands concentration, oneness of aim, and desire. Choose this day whom you will serve. Paradoxically, it is true that you must sacrifice some things to gain others. If you are a young person and wish to succeed in business, you will have to sacrifice the video games, the boozy nights, the TV habit, and all the folly which saps your strength and tends to make you unfit for your work tomorrow. And do you know what the worst habit of all is? the habit of continually looking out for number one. 
that is absolutely fatal to success. Nature is on her guard against such a person, and if by accident they get into a position of power, their lease on the place is short. A great success demands a certain abnegation, a certain disinterestedness. The person who can lose themselves in their work is the one who will succeed best. Courtesy, kindness, and concentration. This trinity forms the sesame that will unlock all doors. Good cheer is twin sister to good health. Prepare yourself for good work, for good work means a preparation for higher work. Success is easy. We do not ascend the mountain by standing in the valley and jumping over it. Success is only difficult for the one who is trying to lift themselves up by tugging at their own bootstraps. Would you like to have your name chime melodiously in the ear of future days? Then cultivate faith, not doubt, and give every person credit for the good they do, never seeking to attribute base motives to beautiful acts. Actions count. Keep in your heart a shrine to your ideals, and upon this altar let the fire never die. Cultivate industry, which is intelligent action, motion and movement. Science tells us that a thought is a physical action, a movement, a vibration of the cells of the brain. Wandering dreamy thought, while useful for creativity, often becomes a bad habit, or more properly, lack of a good habit, for it leads nowhere if not combined with industry. For example, to carry bricks back and forth from one side of the street to the other is not industry because it lacks intelligent purpose. Likewise, to think and make no headway is simply to carry bricks back and forth. The difference between the master and the servant is this. The master is simply the woman and man who is master of one person, themselves. When you have mastered yourself, you are then fit to take charge of other people. The master is a person who has developed intelligent industry, concentration, self-confidence, until these become the habit of their life. Industry in its highest sense means conscious, useful and intelligent effort carried to a certain point. The sensible person will know their limitations and not carry their industry to the point of exhaustion. Before they are tired out, they will turn their attention to something else. The ability to concentrate requires the ability to relax. In order to work, you must know how to play. People who carry great burdens and responsibilities are always those who are able, at times, to lay down the burden and be a child with the children. They can laugh, and there is no medicine equal to a joyful laugh. The individual of power is the one who changes their work. They do one thing at a time, but they do not do the thing all the time. To cultivate concentration, Practice relaxation. Lie down on the floor for three minutes on your back. Breathe deeply. Lie still. And turn your mind within. Think of nothing. To concentrate on your work, you must enjoy your work. And to enjoy your work, you must drop it at certain hours. The one who lasts longest and soars highest is the one who cultivates the habit of being carefree for an hour a day. Take a vacation every day if you want to do good work. Are you on a treadmill at work and in life? 
Well, the only way you can get off is by developing mastership. We are controlled by our habits. At first we manage them, but later they manage us. It is habit that chains us to the treadmill and makes us subject to the will of others. And it is the habit that gives mastership of yourself and others. Industry is a habit. People who go to bed at any old time and get up when they feel like it are never industrious. Worse, they are never healthy. The person who has to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning never has insomnia. If you have to get up at 6, you'll go to bed at 10, and this means you'll get into the habit of going to sleep. If you get into the habit of reading good books from 7.30 to 9.30, six evenings a week, you'll soon find it a delightful habit. I know a great writer in England who writes every morning from 8 o'clock to 11, and then writes at no other time. For he doesn't have to, he has acquired the habit. At 8 o'clock his brain begins to fire up, and he finds it easy and pleasurable, necessary, to concentrate on his work. When you develop the habits of industry and concentration, you will as a result naturally develop self-confidence. When you have reached a point where your work gives you great, quiet joy, and because of this joy you concentrate, then comes self-confidence. You are well along the road to mastership. Robert Louis Stevenson said, I know what pleasure is, for I have done good work. The recipe for self-confidence is, do good work. Courage, says Emerson, comes from having done the thing before. A person who does good work does not have to talk, apologize, or explain. Their work speaks for itself. And even though there be no one to appreciate it, the person feels in it a great quiet joy. They relax, smile, rest, fully intent on taking up their labors tomorrow and doing better than before. For the highest reward that God gives us for doing good work is the ability to do better work. The Inspirational Living Podcast is a production of The Living Hour. Get access to full transcripts of our more than 300 podcasts by becoming a patron today. Learn more by visiting livinghour.org patron. Thanks for listening. I look forward to talking with you next time.